live from Fisherman's Wharf in San Francisco. It's theCUBE, covering IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit, Spring 2017. Brought to you by IBM. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with Peter Burris. We're wrapping up a very full day here at the IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit, Spring 2017. Fisherman's Wharf, San Francisco, an all-day affair, really an intimate affair, 170 people, but you know, chief data officers with their peers, sharing information, getting good information from IBM, and it's an interesting event. They're, they're, they're doing a lot of them around the country and eventually around the world, and we're excited to have kind of the power behind the whole thing. <laughs> uh, Caitlin Lepig, she's the one who's driving the, the train. Don't believe the guys in the front. She's the one behind the curtain that's pulling all the levers. So we wanted to wrap the day. It's been a, a really good day, some fantastic conversations great practitioners, right. want to get your impression of the day. Right, it's been great. Um, you know, the thing I love about this event the most is this is all client-led discussion, uh -huh. client-led conversation. And we're quite fortunate um, in that we get a lot of leading CDOs to come join us. Um, I've seen uh, quite a number this this time. It, uh, we, we tried something new. You know, we expanded to this 170 attendees, by far the largest group that we've ever had. So we ran these four breakout session uh, tracks, and I'm hearing some good feedback about some of the discussions. So I think it's been a good and full day. Yes, it has been. <laughs> Any surprises? Anything that, that kind of jumped out to you that you didn't expect? Yeah, you know, a couple of things. So we structured these breakout sessions. Uh, pointed feedback from last session was, hey, we want the opportunity to network with peers, share use cases, wow. learn from each other. So, you know, I've got my notes here in that we did a function builder. So these are all our CDOs that are starting to build build the, the CDO office. They're new in the journey, right? We've got our data integrators. So they're really our data management, data wranglers. The business optimizers, thinking about how do I make sure I've got the impact throughout the business. And then market innovators. And one of the surprises is how many people are doing really innovative things and they don't realize it. They tell me, ah, oh, I'm oh, just really? at the early stages of setting up the office. I don't have you know, the good use cases to share. And they absolutely do. They absolutely do. So that, that's always a surprise, is how many are actually quite more innovative than I think they give themselves credit. Well, that was a, that was a pretty consistent theme that came out today, is that you, know, you can't do all the foundational work and then wait to get that finished before you start actually innovating, delivering value. Successful. Right, and keep your job, be one of the 41%. So you know you have to be parallel tracking, that, that first process will never finish, but you've got to find some short-term wins that you can execute on right away. And that was one of our major objectives in sort of convening this, this event and continuing to invest in the CDO community, is how do I improve the failure rate? I mean, you know, we all agree, growth in the role, okay. But over half are going to fail. Right. And we start to see some of these folks now that they're, you know, four, six years in, um, uh, having some challenges. And so what we're trying to do is reduce that failure rate. Yeah, hopefully we're still four to six years in. It's still not a yeah. bad start. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, most, most functions that fail quick, that fail, tend to fail pretty quickly. Yeah. So one of the things that I was struck by, and, and I want to get your feedback on this, is that uh, 170 people sounds yeah. like a lot. But it's not so much if there is a unity of purpose. Correct. If Correct. there's pretty clear understanding of what it is they do and how they do it. And I think the CDO's role is still evolving very rapidly. So everybody's coming at this from a different perspective. And you right. mentioned the four tracks. But they seem to be honing in on the same end state. Absolutely. So talk about what you think that end state is. Where is the CDO in five years? Absolutely. So um, I did some live polling as we kicked off the morning and asked a couple of questions along those lines. You know, where do folks report? I think we mentioned this right. as we kicked off. Right. You know, a third to the CEO, a third to CIO, and a third to you know a CXO type role, functional role. And reflected in the room was about that split. I saw about a third, third, third. And yet, you know, regardless of where in the organization, it's how do we get data governance right? How do we get data management right? And then there's this, I think, reflection around, okay, machine learning, deep learning, some of these new opportunities, new technologies. You know, what sort of skills do we need to deliver? Um, I had an interesting conversation with a CDO that said, we make a call across the board. We're not investing to build these technical skills in-house because we know in two years, the guys I had doing Python and all this stuff, it's on to the next thing. And now I got to get machine learning, deep learning, Two years, I'm, I need to move to the next. So it's more identifying technologies, you know, in partnership, bringing those, and bringing this through, and driving the business results. And and, and we heard also very frequently the role that politics plays. Oh, absolutely. And uh, in fact, uh, 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 
uh, forward boot from uh, Kaiser. From, from Kaiser, Kaiser from Inter, yeah. specifically talked about this. He's looking in the stewards that he's hiring and his function. He's looking for people that have learned the fine art of influencing others. And I think it's a stretch for a lot of these folks. Another poll we did is who comes from an engineering technical background. A lot, lot of hands in the room. And we're seeing more and more come from line of business and more and more emphasize the relationship component of it, relationship skills, um, which is, I think is very interesting. We also see a high number of women in CDO roles as compared to other C-suite roles. I like to think right. perhaps it has to do right. with the relationship component of it as well. Cause yeah. it is, uh, well, it's say, interesting. I'm not going to touch it, but it's interesting. <laughs> well, no, I mean, we were, I at, threw it out there. We were at the Stanford <laughs> Women in Data Science event, which is a phenomenal event. We've covered it for a couple of years. And um, Janet George from Western Digital, phenomenal, super smart lady. So, you know, it is an opportunity. And, and I don't think it's got so much of the legacy stuff that maybe some of the other things that had that people can jump in. You know, mm -hmm. Diane Green. Uh, kicked it off, so, yep. you know, I think there's a lot of examples of women doing yeah, things it's in a, data science. Yeah, I, I agree, and, 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 it, and I'll give you another context. In another Cube, another event, uh, I actually raised that issue, well, relationships, because, you know, men walk into the room, they get very competitive very quickly, who's the smartest guy in the room, <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and on what basis, blah, 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 and, and I, we were talking about the need to forge relationships that facilitate influence. Absolutely. And sharing of insight, and sharing of knowledge, and... Uh, and it was a woman guest, and she actually, and I said, do, do you see that women are better at this than others? And she looked at me, she said, well, that's sexist. <laughs> and it was, I right. guess it kind of was. Right. But do you, do you, you, you're saying that it's a place where perhaps women can actually take a step into senior roles in a technology-oriented space yeah. uh, and have enormous success because of some of the things that they bring to the table. Yeah, one quote stuck with me is, you know, when someone comes in, you know, great experience, really smart, are they here to hurt me or help me? And the trust component of it and building the trust. And I think there is um, one event we do here, you know, second day of all of our CDO summits, the Women in Breakfast, the Data Divas Breakfast, and we explore some opportunities for women leaders and um, well attended by men and women. And I think there really is, when you're establishing a data strategy for your entire organization and you need lines of business to contribute money and funding and resources and sign off, um, there is, a, I, I feel sometimes like we're on the hill. You know, I'm back in D.C. working on Capitol Hill and we're shopping around um, to deliver. So absolutely. Uh, another, you know, tying back to what you mentioned about something that was surprising today, um, we've started building out this trust as a service idea and a couple people on panels mentioned you know thinking about the value of, of trust and and how you instill trust I, i'm hearing more and more about that so that was interesting we actually brought that up uh, oh did you yeah we actually brought it up here in the cube and, and, and it was specifically i made an observation uh that uh that when you start thinking about watson and you start thinking about potentially competitive offerings at some point in time they're going to offer alternative opinions Absolutely. and find ways to learn to offer their opinions better than others, just for competitive purposes. Absolutely. And so this notion of trust becomes essential to the brand. Absolutely. I, my system is working in your best interest, Absolutely. not my best interest. And that's not something that people have spent a lot of time thinking about. Exactly. And what it means when we say, you know, when we work with clients and say it's your data, your insight, so we certainly tap that, that information and sure. that data to train Watson, but it's not... It's, we don't want to keep that, right? It's, it's back to you. But how do you design that engagement model to fulfill the privacy concerns, the ethical use of data, you know, establish that trust? Right. I think it's something we're just starting to, to really dig into. But also, but also, if you think about something like, uh, I don't know if you've ever heard of this, but this notion of principal agent theory, where mm -hmm. the principal being the owner, in typical right. economic terms, the agent being the manager, is working on behalf of the owner. Right. And how do their agendas align or misalign? Right. The same thing exists here. We're now talking about systems that have are able to undertake very, very complex problems. Right. Sometimes we'll do so, and people will sit back and say, I'm not sure how it actually worked. Yeah. So they have to be a good agent for the business. Absolutely, absolutely. And this notion absolutely. of trust is essential to that. Absolutely. And it's, it's, it's both, in, you know, it originated internally, right? Trying to trust the answers you're getting sure. on a client. What, who, 
who's our largest, where's our largest client opportunity? You get multiple answers. So it's kind of trusting the, the veracity of the data. But now it's also a competitive differentiator. If, if, as a brand, you can offer that to, right. your, to your clients. The other big thing that came up is, uh, is you guys doing it internally and you know, trying to drive your own internal transformation at IBM which is interesting in and of itself, but more interesting is the fact that you actually want to publish what you're doing and how you did yeah. it as, as, as a roadmap, I think you guys are calling it the blueprint, yes. for your customers, and talk about publishing that actually in October. So I wonder if you can share a little bit more color around what exactly is this blueprint, how is it sure. going to be exposed, um, what should people look forward to? Sure, I, um, I'm very fortunate in that um, Indrapal Bhandari, when he came on board as IBM's first chief data officer, said, I want to be completely transparent with clients on, on what we're doing. And it started with the data strategy. Here's how we arrived at the data strategy. Here's how we're setting up our organization internally. Here's how we're prioritizing selecting use cases. So client 360 is important to us. Here's why. You know, all, Down at every level, we've been very transparent about what we're doing internally. Here's the skill sets I'm bringing on board and why. Um, one one, one thing we've talked a lot about is the business unit data officer. So having someone that sits in the business unit responsible for uh, requirements from the unit, but also ensuring that there's some level of consistency at the right. enterprise level. So we've had some business unit uh, data officers that we've plucked from other organizations that have come and joined, have joined IBM last year, which is great. Um, and so what we wanted to do is, is follow that up with the, an actual blueprint. So I, I own the, the blueprint for Interpol, and what we wanted do is deliver it along three components. So one, the technology component. What technology can you can you leverage? Um, two, the business you know business uh, processes, both the CDO processes and the enterprise like you know HR, finance, supply chain, procurement, etc. Um, and then finally, the organizational consideration. So what sort of strategy, culture, what talent do you need to re recruit? How do you retain your existing workforce to meet some of these new technology needs? Um, and then all, all the sort of relationship piece we were talking about earlier, the culture change is required. Right. How do you go out and solicit that, that, uh, that buy-in? And so our intent is to come back around in October and deliver deliver that blueprint in a way um, that can be implemented within organization. And uh, one thing uh, we are saying is the homework assignment from this event, we're going to send out the, the, the template right. and our version of it and be very transparent. Here's how, we do, how we're doing it internally. Um, and, and, and inviting you know, clients to come back to right. say, you, know, you need to dig in deeper here, this part's relevant to me, um, along the information governance, the master data management, et cetera. And then hopefully come back in October and deliver something that's really you know, of value and, and usable uh, for our clients across the industry. So, so for folks that didn't make it today, uh, too bad for them. Exactly, um, we missed them, but. <laughs> so what, what, what's the next summit? Where's it going to be? How do people get involved? Give us, give us kind of a plug for, for the other people that wish they were here but weren't able to make it today. Sure, so we will come back around in the fall, September, October timeframe in Boston and do our East Coast version of the summit. So hope to see you guys there. Um, it sure should be a lot of fun and at that point we'll deliver the blueprints and I think that will be a fantastic event. We um, committed to 170 data executives here, um, which, which fortunately we're able to, to get to that point and are targeting a little over 200 for the fall. So looking to again expand, you know, continue to expand and invite folks to join us. Um, be careful, you're going to be interconnected before you know. <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> I want it small. Okay. Um, and then also, as I mentioned earlier, we're starting to see more, you know, industry specific uh, financial services, government. We have a government CDO summit coming up June 6, 7 in uh, Washington, D.C. So I think that'll be another great event. And then we're starting to see outside of the U.S., outside of North America, more of the geo summits as well. So. Very exciting times. Well, thanks for inviting us along. Sure, it's been a great day. It's been a lot of fun. All Thank right. you so much. Thank you, Caitlin. <laughs> I'm Jeff Frick with Peter Burris. You're watching theCUBE. We've been here all day at the IBM Chief Data Officer Strategy Summit. That's right, the spring version 2017 in Fisherman's Wharf, San Francisco. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.